Hi everyone, I'm Steve King, known as Steve-O to some of you obviously, and I'm uh, responding or getting to you here from my office in Penticton, British Columbia. Although I literally should be flying on my way to Brisbane right now. I'm sorry and saddened that uh, Gina and I cannot greet you in person for this year's UM Australia, but I think we probably all look a little bit like uh, stunned mullets over what's occurring here globally. Ultraman distance events have been hosted since its inception on the Big Island of Hawaii in 1983 and then in my hometown in 1993 and I've been fortunate to uh, commentate at each of those with the exception of uh, 1994 when I competed and finished the event which was won by the way by an Aussie by the name of Nick Mallet who has been part of uh, UM Australia and is likely right now cycling somewhere in the outback. In fact, interestingly, there are two Ultraman distance events here in town, which are just one week apart. And um, we've had a couple of people that have attempted to do both. Uh, so maybe in the future, uh, some of you might join us here in Canada, as your race director, Tony Horton, has done. In fact, uh, a couple of years ago, he stunned us all when he turned up at the finish line of day number two with none other than Andre Kalik. Uh, the double amputee who has actually competed and finished in the Ultraman events in Canada, uh, Australia and on the Big Island of Hawaii. I also have the honour of commentating at other Ultraman events, including uh, Florida, uh, the UK, Hawaii and of course Australia and I would have been there at the inaugural one this year in Arizona which of course was also cancelled or at least postponed until November. When it comes to Ultraman, it is certainly a huge uh, triathletic journey that requires a, a massive effort and comes with a big cost, not only time-wise, but financially, uh, the sweat you put into your training and the sheer logistics involved in getting organized and getting there to the race site. However, the payoff is often far greater than one can imagine. And the payoff is so great in so many ways not the least of which is the bonding with your crew, uh, your fellow athletes, uh, triathletes and the host organisers. They do an amazing job. Australia has been very hard hit over this last year. What with the fires, what with the floods and now the pandemic, which has totally impacted the globe and has brought sporting events to a grinding halt. Triathletics has taught us all to be hardy, to be tough, to hopefully also have compassion for others. And Ultraman distances especially bring out the best in the human spirit. My hope is that this pandemic will allow the very best of humanity to rise, to resonate and to remain and become the new norm. We're going through obviously a major transformation, which is something that tends to be what happens to those who become part of the ultra triathlon community as well. There is certainly dignity in suffering well, but there is also a big intangible worthy of celebrating at this time, which is the witnessing of that transforming of the uh, human spirit into a celebration of the human struggle. Now, one of the things that happens over the three days of uh, Ultraman or UM Australia specifically in this case is that uh, we get to experience and or witness something very special. Over the course of this next year, let us choose to be the change and practice the change that we wish to see as fellow global citizens, as athletes and travellers on this journey. The big news from Oz today, uh, funny enough, seemed to be about a typical day in Australia where a man, a dog and five camels were tied together and the whole pack of them with the man were attached together and pulled down a steep slope during um, a walk in the Australian bush. So uh, they were rescued by the police, by the way. So it made me think, uh, I wondered if it was uh, Adam Fox by any chance. Certainly appreciate the efforts of all the people who have uh, done so much work on behalf of everyone around uh, the globe in terms of the pandemic. A number of them would have been actually uh, racing with you over these three days. We would have loved to see whose names in 2020 would have joined the winners list along with those of David, Arno, uh, Richard, Carl, Penelope, Chloe, Deanna, uh, Anne and Emily, 
and whose names would have been added to the list of finishers and participants, bearing in mind Australians such as uh, Kevin Kutcher, Mike LaRue, Richard Thompson, uh, Kate Bevilacqua have won the World Ultraman title. May you all be blessed with a year ahead that culminates in 2021 with us all gathering again in Noosa and one that will provide the athletes, uh, the crews, the volunteers, the organizers with three days of personal discovery and gratitude as well for having the ability to undertake such a, a magnificent uh, challenge. But in the meantime, I do want to wish you uh, your crews, the volunteers and organizers, and all of your families, the very, very best of health. And may the meanings of Aloha, Ohana, Kokua always remain with you. And hopefully next year in 2021, we'll all have the pleasure of joining again in celebration of, of the next version of UM Australia. And so, Bog in and have some tucker. Keep flat out like a lizard drinking. Give it a burl and try to keep for it, my friends. Take care.